executive branch. Many of us are surprised uh, by what Barack Obama has done. Uh, he not only adopted most of the Bush policies in the national security area, but also most of the presidential power claims of Bush, and then went further. He actually dwarfed Bush in many respects. The result is a level of unilateral power in the President of the United States that has never existed in this country. And it is going to outlast this president. To my friends on the left that I speak to, I just tell them, here's a news flash. This is not going to be our last president. And there will come a day when you regret the power you gave to this office. Now you look at the power and it's extreme. And this shift uh, of concentrated power, the most extreme is the kill list. You know, you have a president uh, who now claims the authority uh, to be able to kill any U.S. citizen on his sole authority. Now, this is what confuses me, and I must admit, I feel much more comfortable uh, in the 18th century than I do today. I, I, uh, I just prefer it. Uh, maybe it's because I miss the clarity. But I was absolutely dumbfounded uh, by a scene a few years ago, and I wrote a column about it, where Eric Holder went to my law school, I wasn't there, and announced the kill list policy. And I watched this on TV, and there's the Attorney General of the United States in front of an audience filled with judges and lawyers and law students. And he stood there at a podium like this and told them that the President of the United States was now asserting the authority to kill any one of them if he considered them to be an imminent threat to the United States without a charge, certainly without a conviction, not even without an indictment. He could kill any one of them. Now that was surprising in and of itself, but the most surprising thing is what followed, is that they applauded. I, I just, I looked out at that audience and saw these people applauding an attorney general who just said that they were reserving the right to kill any one of them without a trial. And I stood there and I thought, you know, for the first time, I was sort of shaken to the core, because I, I, I think I'm an optimist. Even though I've been in the city a long time, it's hard to be an optimist. But when it comes to the Constitution of the United States, I've always been an optimist, because I believe that James Madison created one of the more, more perfect systems. It's not entirely perfect, but it's the best thing going. And for the first time, I sat there, and I really had a crisis of faith. Because I don't think the framers would ever have imagined. I'm not talking about George Mason, who saw this coming, who was a, a, just a fantastically brilliant uh, framer. And Mason clearly saw this coming. But I don't think any of the framers would have thought that an attorney general of the United States could tell an audience of Americans, let alone judges and lawyers, that they were adopting a kill list policy and have that announcement met by applause.